In today's video, we're going to learn how to move a WordPress website from one hosting provider to another without any expensive plugins or extra cost. It's actually what some people call the old fashioned way. We're going to move the code, the database, and any settings that we have to do from one provider to another without any extra fluff and stuff to make it work. So stick around and watch our video. Hi, I'm Andy Klepner with Automated Marketer. We produce content based around digital marketing, web development, online sales funnels, automation, and how to make money online so you can do more for yourself, your clients, and your business. Make sure you smash that subscribe button down below and ring that bell so you don't miss any of our future videos. Now let's get started. So one of my clients, William Smart and Associates, we're gonna be redoing this website soon. But before we do that, we need to move it from its old hosting provider from where it's being housed right now to the new server that we're going to be building the website out of. So what we want to do is we're first going to go to what's known as InMotion hosting to grab the files in the database and so forth and we're going to be moving this to the SiteGround uh, platform. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to log into that InMotion hosting uh, root folder and I'm going to go right directly to that, to that account. Now, when I go to that account, I'm going to go right to the C panel. In the C panel, we have a couple things that are very important and a, and a couple ways that we can download a backup. Now, you can do a straight backup. They have a backup provider in here, a backup wizard, but we're, we're not going to do that. We're going to do it in a little bit of a different way where we can just get the database and just get the files that we need. So first, we're going to start off with the files. We're going to go to File Manager, and then we're going to go to the public HTML folder right here. We're gonna right click on this folder and we're gonna compress this to make this easier to move. And I'm just gonna hit this compress button. This will just take a moment or two. All right, that has already been compressed. And all I gotta do is download this file now. Now what that does is give me a backup of all of the different files and settings that are in the folders. And now I'm gonna drag that into the appropriate folder where I'm gonna be using it soon. I have created on my PC a move site uh, folder where I'll be keeping all these files. So I just moved it over into there. Now I'm gonna change the name of this and I'm gonna rename it to public HTML smart insurance. That way I just have a nice reference for it. Okay, so that's ready to go. The next part that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the database and grab the database. Now, I do that again by starting at cPanel. If you're in a cPanel format, there's two different ways we can do this. One way we can do it, which is the first way I'm gonna show you, is we can hit backup, and right here's the database, and we just click it and it downloads. Now, in the programs that you have, or excuse me, in the hosting provider that you have, you may not be able to have it that way. Uh, it might not be as convenient as clicking a one-click backup. If it's not, I'm gonna show you another way to do it that's actually also equally as easy. Now, another way to grab the database is to use a program called PHP MyAdmin. Most Linux servers already have this installed. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click right here on PHP MyAdmin, and it's gonna load the program, the program base up. From that base, you're gonna see that our database is right there. We just click right there, and here are all the different tables that we're gonna be downloading. To export this, we just click on the Export tab, and we're just gonna do a quick download of this, and we hit Go. And this automatically downloads the database for us, as you can see right here. And it's a very small database. This is a small website. I'm going to be using this one to upload to my new server. So I'll be dragging that back again into that folder, as you can see right there. And there we are ready to go. We have our two main things that we need. We have our files and we have our database. So the next part of this is that we're going to make in the SiteGround, where we're going to be hosting this, a new website area. And we're going to be uploading these files and databases to that area. All right, now I'm in the My Websites area of SiteGround. In here, I'm gonna create a new website just by going to New Website in the top right-hand corner, and we're gonna select a plan. And I have a couple different servers in here, so I'm just gonna choose the one I'm gonna be placing this website on. And since this is gonna be a new domain, normally we would pick new, do new domain right here and just move the site wholesale over. We're not gonna do that. We have 
an existing domain actually that's already been established so we may want to use this but you know what i don't want to do that either what i'm going to use is a temporary domain so i instantly have something to view even though i don't have the settings ready to do the domain transfer the dns and so forth so i'm just going to choose temporary domain i clicked temporary domain it gives me a basic temporary domain to work with and i hit continue now siteground has what's called migrate website now that migrate website is perfect to use um, if you're going to be migrating from one WordPress provider to another. But I'm not doing it that way. I'm doing what it, what's called the, the hard way, which I actually like because it, it actually allows me to do a little bit more configuring than, than other ways. So I'm not going to use this uh, migrate website today. What I will be using is this skip and create an empty site. So we're just going to click that right now right here. And I can choose whether I want to use Site Scanner. Uh, for this site, I'm not going to be using this right now. And I'm just going to click Finish. And it's going to create the site. I'll see you back in a minute when this is done loading. All right, so SiteGround has now finished building out our shell of a website. It's really just an open folder. If I go into the Site Tools, you'll actually see exactly what I'm talking about. If I go in here and I go into Site and I go into File Manager, as you can see, the public HTML folder is empty except for the default HTML file. And if I go to this domain, andrewb349sg-host.com, it's also not going to show anything. So within Site Tools, we're going to upload and we're going to add all of these files, all those files that we downloaded from the previous uh, hosting provider, we're going to upload it right into this folder. The way we do that is that we click on this uh, file upload link right here and we go into the move site folder that we've been working with and we just click on our zip file and that's just going to take a moment to upload. All right, so our zip file has now uploaded. Now, you may have wanted to, depending on the size of your file, use an FTP account to do that with, but for the for this tutorial, we just use the regular upload uh, folder. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna decompress this. We're gonna right click on it, and we're gonna uh, extract everything that's in there. And that's gonna take a moment too. All right, and that's created a folder that has the same name as the zip file we just had. So this isn't in the right root directory yet. We gotta get all these files into the root directory. We click into the folder and then go one deeper because it is a public HTML. And here are all of the files that we're gonna need to upload into our, into our new folder. So I'm just gonna click the ones that matter. I have some older stuff in here from when I've worked on the website in the past. We're not gonna use those. We're gonna click the website excuse me, the WP admin, WP content, and WP includes, those are the first ones. And I am going to move these by clicking on move. And then I'm gonna delete all this extra stuff here and just make sure that I get it into the public HTML folder. So we're gonna delete that and I'm gonna confirm. And it may take a moment, but those files are gonna immediately move over. And if I go into public HTML, on the higher end of this, you'll see that these have all been added right there, nice and easy. So I'm gonna go back into this folder, and then I'm gonna grab all these other folders. I'm not gonna worry about this one. This is from old stuff when I've worked on their website many, many years ago. And actually, it looks like I also have an old zip file. This is actually a really good opportunity to clean out any files that you're not gonna need. So I'm gonna delete the, this one. I'm gonna take all this stuff, and I'm just gonna delete it. All right, and as you can see, everything is nice, all there. So I'm gonna take all these files and I'm gonna move them again into the root public HTML folder by right-clicking, clicking on Move, and deleting all this extra stuff to the public HTML that I wanna use, right there. Okay, the .com slash public HTML. So that's gonna put it into the right folder. And that just took a moment, as you saw. And now I have all of the, I have these three folders and all the extra files, but I still have some extra stuff here that I'm gonna delete. So I'm gonna click on this one, which was the original folder. I'm gonna leave the zip in here just in case I need it for later on if everything didn't go right. And actually I think that's just gonna be it. So I'm gonna delete that file straight away. And we have a nice clean install of all the files 
from the last hosting provider. So the next thing we have to do after this is that we need to upload the database. On the left hand side, I'm going to be going to MySQL and I'm going to be creating a new database. Now the new database has been created. I'm going to be copying the database name and then I'm going to create a new user for that database. I'm going to create that user and that user with its new password has been created and I'm just going to copy that and kind of put it to the side because I'm going to need that a little bit later. Now the next thing I want to do is click on manage access because I have to give it privileges to use the database I just created. So all I got to do because it's already set up is hit confirm and all of those access all those access points have been added. All right so our database is now set up. We're going to upload to the database next our old database that we have. So we go to PHP my admin because they also use it. Like I said, basically every Linux provider uses it. We click access PHP my admin. We're going to make sure we're on the new database by clicking on it. As you can see, there are no tables in here at all right now. And all we got to do is click import, choose the file and find the C the old SQL database we were using and hit go. And in a matter of moments, all those tables are going to be added to our database. All right, and if I click on now it's been added, it says I click on structure and everything has been added all nice there. Now you may think to yourself, wait, then I guess I'm done. You're not. You have one last thing to do. You have to do the settings in order to make everything work. So what we do is we go back to file manager and we go into the settings file, uh, the excuse me, the config file of our website. We click on it and we edit it with this pencil right here. In here we have in here we have our database name, our user, and our password. And we need to change that with the information we got when we created the new database. And I'm going to do that right now. Database name. Database user and database password. All right, and that's all done. Now I just have to save that. Now that all the tables have been added to the database, we have to go in here and change some settings to make sure it works with the temporary domains. So what we do is we go to WP underscore options, and right in here we need to change these two values to the new URL that we're gonna be using. So all we gotta do is click right into it. Now I've already copied it, I'm gonna paste it right here, make sure you get rid of that trailing slash. And we wanna make sure that we actually get an S on here, we want to always be HTTPS. And we're gonna put the second one in here, get rid of the S, get rid of the slash. And now when we go to that URL, it's going to work just fine. We click on it. As you can see, it loads. Now, of course, we're not done yet. We need to do a couple more things to make sure this is working just fine. We're going to check out the administrative area. We go to WP-admin. It's going to lo load in the login screen. And I'm going to put in my username and password to make sure this works. Type it in right here. And then we're going to log into the website. Now, everything is kind of close to done. Everything should be working. We can click on the pages and we can test these to see if they're starting to work. And it looks like they're working just fine and all the links are ready to go. Okay, so this basic website has been completely uploaded and is ready for us to start editing and start working on. And when it's done, we're going to have a, a new website where we'll be able to have the client move over their DNS and put the domain name on here. And that's all there is to it, to move your WordPress website from one hosting provider to another. Now, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. And I hope to see you here real soon again to learn more about how to manage your WordPress website.